Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the wonderful world of two wheels. I am your host for today's pilgrimage, pernicious tube, scrumptious womb, yammy noob. Today's video is a rare and special one, a feature that doesn't come around very often. Today we are doing a top 10 list. Typically we reserve ourselves to just seven or nine lest we become too powerful and challenge the likes of Watch Mojo or something like that. But today we just couldn't help it. We will be taking a look at the top 10 greatest motorcycles of all time. Now I can already sense your keyboard warrior tendencies, ready to fire away, lobbing comment after comment, letting me and the motorcycling world at large know that you are the arbiter of what constitutes the greatest motorcycle of all time and some bald guy on YouTube couldn't possibly determine that. Now, while you slap away on your keyboard chasing clout and thumbs ups on your comment, I'll tell you there's a bit of a twist to today's video. Since we couldn't determine the greatest motorcycles of all time just on our own, we enlisted and crowdsourced these opinions from our Discord members. So for today's video, numbers 10 and 9 on this list will be Spite and I's personal choice of what the greatest bike of all time is, then the rest were all written by members on our Discord server. Which, by the way, if you're not signed up on yamminoob.co and part of our Discord, what are you even doing with yourself? Are you even a motorcyclist? Seriously, we have the best community on the internet for two wheels. Get on there. So for today, Spite and I will trade off reading these wonderful submissions as part of the spirit of crowdsourced memory. Enjoy this list of the top 10 greatest bikes of all time. Number 10, the KTM 690 SMCR. First up on today's list is the KTM 690 SMCR, and it's hands down the world's greatest supermoto. What, you think I was gonna make a video about the best motorcycles of all time and not include my own motorcycle? Forget that crazy 450 conversion that your buddy's uncle did. This one was made in Austria, so there's no hold my beer energy to it. Or is there more? Oktoberfest is German, isn't it? Well, maybe that explains why the only people out there who own these bikes are me and a bunch of Germans on YouTube. But anyway, the SMCR features a 690cc single cylinder that makes 72 horsepower and 54 foot-pounds of torque at the wheel, and it weighs in at 350 pounds wet, which means that the challenge isn't popping a wheelie, it's keeping that front wheel on the ground. If that wasn't crazy enough, it's got a full suite of electronics like traction control, lean-sensitive ABS, and a bi-directional quick shifter. Yeah, you heard me right, that's a supermoto with an auto blipper. And when you pair that with its slipper clutch and available supermoto mode, you can do some massive skiddies around a track, and with your 650 levels of power, you're not stuck at a go-kart track with DRZs and Groms. Number 9, the Daytona 675R. What can be said about the finest sport bike ever created that hasn't already been said? You already know what it is. Number 9 on today's list belongs to the second generation Triumph Daytona 675R. You want world-class handling and razor-sharp flicking? You want an engine that screams to 14,500 RPM while howling away with an intake sound that will lead you to believe there's a gold-plated vacuum cleaner right in front of your face? The Daytona is one of the most soulful and pure experiences you can have on a modern-day sport bike. A cable-actuated throttle, no rider modes, no traction control, just pure analog fun, and a sweeping needle that drops perfectly when you actuate the quick shifter that comes equipped stock. Stare down in the cockpit and you'll find your senses enveloped by carbon fiber, blue-capped Olin's fully adjustable suspension, and perfectly shaped levers that actuate a very capable Brembo brake system. The 675R is the greatest middleweight supersport ever created, and nothing will ever change my mind. Number 8, the Honda CB500F. So the next bike on our list is the Honda CB500F, and it's basically a CBR500R that got all manscaped so that you could see that sexy engine. The CB500F is powered by a 471 parallel twin, and yeah, it doesn't sound as mean as the RSV4 or have that cross-plane sound of an MT10, but it'll do. The CB comes with full LEDs, a slipper clutch, an LCD dash, and preload adjustability in the front and rear with some nice blue fork caps. Now, I'd bore you with the rest of the specs, but that isn't what makes the bike the best. The reason we chose this bike is how it feels when you ride it. It has plenty of power for the highway, it has a beautiful bark that makes you feel like you're going way faster than you actually are, and it feels so well built when you're sitting in the cockpit, it's just so dang pleasing. The suspension handles bumps super well and it isn't too saggy when you're trying to tear up a corner like Rossi. It also looks pretty mean with its Street Fighter aesthetics. All of this is why it made number 8 on our list of the world's best bikes. 
Number seven, the KTM RC8R. This is orange unobtainium in street bike form, so it's something special to throw a leg over. It's a complex topography of soft curves, hard angles, and passion. If robots were given souls, this is what they'd use for porn. Then there's KTM's Obsession, a hard-edged, hardcore monomania of fast to match the RC8R's looks, bringing us to the RC8R's structural and spiritual heart and 1195cc V-twin engine. It's a snorting, fire-breathing demon giving the RC8R a raw mechanical visceral feel. It certainly doesn't coddle your imprecise humanity. Around town, the RC8R feels like a snarling, caged animal, but uncorked, the RC8R reveals itself to be absolutely feral, yet very easy to ride. The engine blitzes from 6,000 RPM to redline in a blink. There's a raw mechanical purity here, something that makes Ducatis feel like an Italian Honda. Don't confuse it with unrefined because free from traffic, the RC8R is utterly sublime. The throttle becomes a precise instrument. Formerly harsh, the suspension holds their own in a vicious, lovingly clawed embrace. Abrupt one-finger brakes become surgeon's scalpels, excising speed with fadeless delicacy. The handling is elegantly rapid and planted with a 600cc sport bike quick tip-in, making the RC8R the world's angriest ballet dancer. Abrupt and elegant, comfortable and hard-edged, the KTM RC8R is a passionate contradiction until you realize it is designed with a sublime sport bike purity that slices through all of its low-end faults. The RC8R is the elegance of a sonnet conducted as blood sport, an ode to your next track day. Number 6, the Harley Davidson CVO Street Glide. You like tech? You like comfort? You like style? Well, never fear, my two-wheeled brethren. I've got the perfect answer for you. It's the iconic Harley-Davidson CVO Street Glide. When you revolutionize the market and immediately get imitated by the likes of Honda, Indian, Suzuki, and Yamaha, then you're definitely doing something right. That's exactly what the Street Glide has done. Sure, you speedy boys out there might think that you can ride forever on your leader bike, but your lower back begs to differ. On that sexy Street Glide, there's no limit to the amount of miles you can put down. As in all aspects of life, age and maturity brings wisdom. Dad bike? Nah, my dudes. That's a real bike right there. Full bat wing, front fairing, a liquid slash air-cooled engine pumping out 105 horsepower and 125 foot-pounds of torque makes you giggle like a kid every time you crank open that throttle. The paint job is a pure work of art and it's got all the creature comforts you could ask for. Don't let that 886 pound wet weight scare you. You're securely planted on the road riding through those twisties effortlessly looking like the badass you are. Sure, it's gonna cost you, but like everything that's great in life, it's worth working for. Number five, the Yamaha RD350 LC YPVS. Why the RD350 LC YPVS? What's more humbling than being overtaken by a 350cc naked while on a 900cc sport bikes? Because that was the experience of riders back in the 80s. This pocket rockets engine is like a box full of murder hornets opened up and you're in for a surprise. The RD's 350cc two-stroke Stinger has 59 horsepower and 29 foot-pounds of torque. That may not sound like a lot by modern standards, but this was in the 80s. But the GPZ900R made 115 horsepower. I hear you scream from behind your screens. Yes, that is true, but that behemoth was a bull on a bicycle weighing in at a colossal 566 pounds wet, where the RD weighs in at merely 328 pounds. This stonkin' 238-pound weight difference is like whacking your Great Dane pal Scooby-Doo kitted out head-to-toe and gear on the back of your bike. This bike came out with a fully fared option known as the RD350R that dropped a quarter-mile time from 13.5 to 12.4. This little bike punches way above its weight class, even nowadays, especially with people like Tumoto and York pumping out 85 wheel horsepower from it. Number 4 is the Honda RC211V. Next up on our list today is a bike so good that mere mortals aren't even allowed to ride it. What has more horsepower than a V4, a smaller footprint than an inline 6, and was ridden to two world championships by our lord and savior Valentino Rossi? A transversely mounted V5 displaced in 990 cc's of pure power. It won three world championships and the testicular fortitude required to ride this beast was a task for Valentino and Nikki Hayden alone, who both rode it to MotoGP championships. They were among the lucky few who had the pleasure of riding a bike with 240 brake horsepower, 149 kilograms wet, that one right there is for all of you boys across the pond, and 48 race wins. Need I also mention that it was driven by VR46? Now wait a minute, so V that fits between 4 and 6, 
five? Coincidence? I think not. Rossi, praise be! If it was good enough for Valentino Rossi and Nikki Hayden to win world championships, it's good enough to be given the title of one of the best motorcycles ever produced. Number three, it's the Kawasaki Ninja 636. So back in the 90s, 600cc sport bikes started to come up. All of the big four built them. Then in 2002, Kawasaki figured building 600s was for suckers and gave the new ZX6R a bump 636. In 600 culture, this was considered a dick move. With those extra 37 cubes, Cowie now had a motorcycle that just went a tiny bit more powerful and torquey than the competition. The motorcycle underwent several updates and at last we arrive at the 2005 ZX636C, the greatest motorcycle of all time. At a wet weight of 192 kgs, 423 pounds in freedom units, 70.5 newton meters or 52 foot pounds of torque, and 130 horsepower guarantees that you can brag to all your other 600 boys about the dang canoonery you pulled last night. The looks are stunning too. Round yet aggressive styling, integrated front turn signals, and an undertail exhaust makes this one of the most beautiful bikes ever. But all that is not what makes this bike so great, it's the single fact that makes all ninjas great. It's a bike that makes small children want to ride bikes. It and its brethren lead new young squids to the art of motorcycling, and that, I think, is beautiful. Number 2, the Honda Magna V45. Next up on our list of the best bikes of all time is the spicy four-banger everyone uncle knows and mistakes for its 1100cc older brother, the 1983 Honda Magna V45 750cc muscle bike. This beast boasts 79 horsepower from the abandoned factories from which it was born. With a blistering 12.2 second quarter mile 37 years ago, there's absolutely nothing holding you back on this beast except for rust and ethanol. The V45 Magna comes tromping in at 500 pounds dry, which is tons lighter than all those Harleys you'll be outrunning on the back roads. The rear drum brake combined with the dual disc up front is sure to slow you down before you splatter the neighbor's kid as he dives in front of you attempting insurance fraud. This bike will force your girlfriend to make you sleep on the couch for hitting triple digits every time you go out for an evening cruise on this classic squid missile. Speed vibrations, a high cost of maintenance, literally no aftermarket, and difficulty finding new parts, they're all just oversights when you have your arms ripped off at 10,000 RPM banging through the six-speed transmission. And number one on today's list and the best written entry we received, the Aprilia RS V4 Tuono 1100 Factory. That's an easy one. It's the Aprilia Tuono 1100 Factory. Why the Tuono? You want even Ducatistas to turn green with envy? Tuono. You like horsepower and torque? 175.89. Tuono. You don't want to be folded up like origami in a sport bike? Tuono. You want to humble the cruiser boy rev and his twin? Rev back with the V4 that will leave them in awe. Tuono. Speaking of sound, Tuono is Italian for thunder. Tuono, are you a recovering squid? Ride it like a unicycle all the way through six car. Tuono, need a reason to look back and admire pure sex after dismounting? Tuono, scooter boy looking to upgrade? Quick shifter and suite of electronic nannies. Tuono, don't like removing vinyl siding to change your oil? Tuono, want to see spite boygasm on a V4 cold start? Tuono! Now how you doing partner? This video is over, but you click on this one right over here, you keep watching yourself some yammy new. Maybe I bend my boots on this one, maybe I give you some other funny memes or something like that. You might not know if you watch the video, so watch the video now, alright?